There are three major career paths in music. Music performance, music production, and music management. My heart breaks every time I see people struggling in their music career, especially when that struggle is due to lack of information or not knowing exactly what to do. There are certain steps you must take to succeed in this career path. If you don't take these steps, a journey of one year can become 10 years for you. And this is the stress I want to save you by sharing with you everything I have learned on this 20 years journey. Yeah, so all you need to do, follow this account and check in every day for one minute video or one secret per day for the next 10 days. And I bet you it will be a life changing experience for you. So number one secret to pursue music successfully is that you must be driven by the right motivation, by the right intention. You must answer the question, why? Of all the career choices in the world, why music? It's not enough that you love it. It's not enough that you have talent for it. You don't choose music. Music must choose you. And when music chooses you, you can't run from it. You can't avoid it. You can't stop it. Until you pursue it, you really can find happiness and fulfillment. So the reason that you are pursuing it is not for fame. It's not for money. But because that is your path to finding fulfillment. You want to actualize yourself and you want to share your gift with the world. You cannot rise above your intentions. If your intention for pursuing music is right, it's only a matter of time you will succeed. The second step to becoming very successful in your music career is to have a vision for your life and put that vision into a set of goals, specific goals, measurable goals, time-bound goals. A lot of people are just freelancing through life. You wake up, you're so busy, you're in the studio, you're rehearsing, you're writing songs, but you do not really have in mind, this is what I want to achieve. All you tell people is, I want to blow, I want to succeed in my music career. No, big success doesn't come that way. It comes with small steps. So you must have specific goals, three months goals, six month goals, one year goal, two years, five years. So you have to sit down in the next three months, I want to achieve this. Small goals, don't make, don't make them too big or too scary. Just write it down. I want to train my voice after which I'll learn my instrument or I want to record my first single. I want to write two more songs. And then you put in every effort you've got in the world, every strength within you to make sure you achieve it. Recently in the music business class, I asked my students if they knew the artist with the highest YouTube views ever. Eight billion views, eight billion views on his song. I mentioned his name, Louis Fonsi. Nobody knows that name. Then I mentioned his country, Puerto Rico. Only a very few people have heard about the country. Then I played the song, Despacito. Despacito. And everybody said, wow, wow, we know that song is so popular, it's so successful, it's so big. And I said, calm down. The success of a song does not depend on how big an artist is. How big the superstar they are featuring in the song is or how much they have in their pocket or where they are from or whether they have had success before or not. The success of a song is determined by two factors. Number one, the content. And number two, the strategy. If you have all the money in the world but lack quality content, you cannot have a lasting win. You will have some wins sometimes because of money and the connection. The, your music will come out on TV and radio. You, people put in their mouth that you can't force it down their throat. So how do you come about a great, irresistible content? Number one, great content is coming from a genuine place. An authentic place. Something you create from the bottom of your soul. A good content is market friendly. It is timely. It's targeting a market a style, a culture. There is something strikingly new about a good content. So even if you make music within the Afrobeat space, within the gospel space, within the jazz space, a good content, as much as it fits into that market, it brings out something new. It suggests something new. It introduces a new energy into the market. It stands you out from the mix. It stands you out from the crowd. 
one of the major mistakes a lot of artists make is to contract out the work of promoting themselves or promoting their music without having their own input. So these marketing companies or promotion company will use the strategy, the same method they use in promoting other artists because they succeeded using that strategy. They bring you to your job and then you don't see any result. The reason is because there are no two artists who are exactly the same in terms of content, in terms of target market, in terms of personality, in terms of weaknesses and strengths. So the best way to go about it is to put all of these factors on the table, sit down with a team, be very honest with yourself. Do we need the radio now? Are we going to do television now? Should we just shoot a viral video, put this on Instagram and YouTube and promote it for three months and let's see what happens. Design a strategy that best suits your kind of music, your personality and the market you're targeting. And you will be fine. So on this fifth day, we're talking about relationship and connections. When you tell a lot of young people about relationship and connection, what comes to their mind is knowing people at the topmost part of the industry. Record label CEOs, radio, television people, people in the media and all that. That's what they call connection. But they get it wrong. That in the music industry, value does not flow from up to down. Value flow in a parallel direction. Meaning that people would hardly open the door to you. Talk less of offering help if they don't feel that you're on the same level or they have something to gain from you. So how then do you build connection as a young artist? In your place of work, in your band, in your church choir, the small studio you go to record, it is the relationships you took time to build today that find their way up the ladder to top of the industry that become your connection. So do not take everyday relationships for granted. On this sixth day, we're talking about consistency. As an up-and-coming artist, you cannot take a break in your career because you haven't even started. That break will be counted as a quit for you. I see some people today will take every saving they have, release a single and give it a strong push, do everything, and they will have some traction, some stream, some encouraging results. And then for the next two years, nothing comes out from them. If you want to do something two years later, the unfortunate part is that you will start from ground zero. Whatever you've done two years ago does not count anymore because you were an upcoming artist. So instead of doing that one big project and getting stranded, split that budget into smaller projects that will ensure consistency and growth. That is how you guarantee success. So sometimes even if you have to take a compulsory break, then ahead of that break, you create content that will roll out even when you are not available. This journey is not about how you feel. There are days you wake up and don't feel like doing anything. You don't have the motivation or even the strength. What I discovered that the actions you take at those moments of your life are the ones that count the most. On this seventh day, we're looking at making the right career choice. Are you sure at the moment that what you're doing in music is where your best strength lies? Many years ago, when I decided I wanted to do music, I started by joining the choir and then learning musical instruments and then writing songs and all of that. I was within the performance space. But along the journey, I realized that my best strength lies in music entrepreneurship. And then I also love music education. I love training and empowering other people. I made a U-turn, not to abandon the things I started with, performance, writing, and all that, but to now prioritize. So in the scheme of things, I know entrepreneurship and education comes first. So please do this assignment for me. Sit down and make a list of at least three things you can do within the music space. You know that you love to do it, you have the skill to do it, and you can get paid for it. And in all honesty, make a choice of the best and prioritize it. Not like dump the remaining ones, but they will now play a supporting role or what you might want to call side hustles. No matter how talented and good your work is, if you have not mastered the art of selling yourself, you cannot go far. You meet some people and they are so good, you'll be like, how are people getting to know that you're this talented? And they'll be like, well, I'm trying. You don't just have to try. You have to be intentional about pushing yourself out there. 
I know you might be a shy and reserved person and you're a bit uncomfortable about blowing your own trumpet. Then music is not for you. If you're doing music, you must take pride in blowing your own trumpet. In fact, the reality is, if you are like on level three in real life, when you market and promote yourself and package yourself out there, people should perceive you to be on level 10. This is what show business is about. The business of showing off for the world to see. So how do you go about selling yourself? You knock on every door that needs what you have. Whether they post a vacancy or not, go all out and check with them. This is who I am. This is what I do. It doesn't hurt if they say no. You keep trying knock on every door. Also, package your talents into content and roll it out frequently. Regardless of how many likes or views you're getting now, you're getting two views, five likes, and you're feeling bad. No. A lot of people are actually seeing your work. They might not be reacting to it now, but the result will soon start coming in. You must consistently push yourself out there in the face of everybody that needs to know you exist. If you ask a lot of musicians why nothing is going on for them, they will tell you they don't have the money to do what they have to do. And this is a serious challenge you have to learn to fix early enough in your career. A lot of people are doing nothing hoping that someday somebody will find them very talented and invest in them or sign them to a label and they would make progress. It usually doesn't work that way. You must crack the money code. So how do you do that? First, look within the music industry. Is there any talent, any gift, any service you can offer that people can pay you for? Can you monetize any of your musical skills? Can you teach music somewhere? Can you be a vocalist in a band? Can you make beats for other people? Can you play, uh, play an instrument for a choir, for a band, and earn a living, earn money to support your career? Or you want to pick up a part-time job? What kind of part-time job do I recommend? I recommend digital skills. In this age and time, the best skill you can acquire is a digital skill. Photography, video editing, cinematography, uh, graphics design, web design, digital and social media marketing. You won't only earn enough money to support yourself. It will also give you enough time to pursue your music career. And when you need these skills, you're not paying for it. You would apply it to your own career. I believe it's been an amazing 10 day journey for you. And on this 10th and final day, we're talking about guidance and mentorship. I've spent the last nine days giving you different advice on how to be successful in your music career. But along the journey, a lot of times you'll be at a crossroad. You'll be at a tough point in your career. Sometimes you'll be so confused. The decisions you make at such points will either set you back or take you forward. And that is why you need a trusted person in your life who will be a mentor, a coach, a counselor. So how do you choose a coach? Somebody who has your interest at heart, someone who is not in competition with you, somebody who wants you to win, somebody who is available to offer you help, somebody who has the experience that you are trying to acquire, someone who has been to where you're trying to go, that is a mentor. You can find them anywhere and message them, email them, you would like to be a mentee. You might apply to a company where you have somebody who will be a mentor to you and apply to be an intern. It can be a friend who is well advanced and knowledgeable and you can confide in but you would always need somebody to talk to so that you don't make expensive mistakes that will set you back when you are at crossroads i wish you all of the best and may you win and succeed in your music career